Success means a favorable ending of something that has been attempted. For example, if you're a football coach and your team wins, then that is a success. But on the other hand, your team can win every game of the season, get to the playoffs, and win that perch in the Super Bowl and lose. And you won't consider yourself a success. And the reason is nobody remembers all those games you won getting to the Super Bowl. What they remember is who won the Super Bowl. Does that sound like a successful life to you? It doesn't to me, because it all hinges on one game. And what if we don't get to that game? Does that mean we're not successful? That's not the way I define success. A successful person has an atmosphere about them. They have this air of confidence about them. You can feel something about this person that we consider to be a success. They have a confidence in what they believe their goals are. They have a confidence in what it is that they want to do with their lives. And they have a confidence and a self-assurance that's tangible, that you can feel it when you're around them. He brought a great deal of entrepreneurship and innovation to the world, not just to his own life, not just to a small realm of people, but to the world. And that person is Steve Jobs. Mm -hmm. And I was amazed at this person. He was creative, innovative. His one desire in life was to have the greatest company in the world. And he did. His company is when you talk about, you don't even have to, you know, the, 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 the Apple store in Albuquerque doesn't even have a sign on it. But you know what it is by the apple mm -hmm. that's on the, the front of the building. That's how great Apple has become. But Steve Jobs himself, if you look at his life, if you read his biography, he was a troubled man, and he piled, plied all of that trouble into creating a company, into creating what he thought the world needed. He didn't wait for people to decide they wanted the latest and greatest in computer works. He convinced us that we wanted them. We owe our iPads, our iPods, our iPhones, our Macs. And any other kind of phone that you have, whether it's an Apple product or not, we owe that to Steve Jobs. Because he was the genius behind it all. Was he successful? Yes, he was. If you, if you count success in products that he created, if you count success in the amount of money that he had, yes, he was a success. But he knew what he wanted to do, and he was willing to do what it took to bring that about. And so from that point of view, he was a success. Success is like everything else in life. It is a journey. It is a journey of the soul. Successful people have faith in themselves. They have a belief in what it is that they're wanting to do. Science of mind has the formula for success. It is knowing who you are. And that who is with a capital H. Who you are. Knowing your true self. This is the first of the foremost formula and the only formula for knowing, for having a successful life. Knowing who you are and knowing that that who is your divine higher self. This is how we 
know that we are successful, when we know that we have within us that greater and higher power, that power that supersedes everything else, that power that created this universe, when we know our true self, we know that power. And that power is what brings about success because we know that we can tap into that power. That is the power that created the universe. And that is the power that we use every time we think. Every time we dream up something that we want to do, that's not our thought, that's that thought from the higher realms. It's the thought of our higher self. That passion is given to us when we know who we truly are. And it is, it is from that passion that we create a successful life. It is from that passion that we can live and know that everything we do is successful simply because who we, of who we are. This is our formula for success, to know who we are and to live from that knowing and to know that it is that knowing, that one true self that gives us this passion. This is the promise of science of mind, that when you align yourself with your true self, when you listen to that inner voice, and then when you heed it, you will be successful. And the principles of success are simply these. There is a law. There is a law that carries out every thought, every feeling that we have. And when we comply with that law, we will be successful in everything that we do. And how do you comply with that law? You comply with it by knowing that it will bring about, it will manifest everything that you want and so we want to be careful of how we think, how we feel. We want to be careful of our beliefs because it is that law that works with those thoughts and those feelings and those beliefs that brings about our success. The second principle is that the law is infinite. The law is unlimited. We are the ones who set limits on anything. We think, oh, I can't do that because that's setting a limit. The law is infinite. It knows no limits. The law is immeasurable. You can't measure anything about the law because it is immeasurable. This is what infinite means. Immeasurable. It cannot be measured. You can measure a length of cloth when you're going to make a dress or a tablecloth or something. You can measure it, but you cannot measure the law because there's no end to it. There's no beginning to it. And so the second principle is that the law is infinite. And when we realize the law is infinite, we realize that we are infinite. We realize that there is nothing that we want to do, be, or have that we can't do, be, or have because we are infinite also. We are infinite just because we are expressions of that one true self. And the law works in harmony with the nature, the laws of nature. It will not go against the laws of nature. This book called Weather Shamanism says that the weather patterns are changing in the world. We are no longer in harmony with nature. And the reason we're no longer in harmony with nature is that we are not listening to nature. Several years ago, I, had a, I took a class in sociology. And then during this, one of the things that we studied was weather patterns and rain, moisture. And one of the things I remember distinctly is that all of our concrete that we are pouring, the cities full of sidewalks and streets, and concrete walls and concrete buildings are disturbing the weather patterns. When we don't have enough 
greenery to collect moisture, the water runs off and it doesn't create what is needed to attract rain. So we don't have grass, so we don't have flowers, so we don't have trees. And because we don't have the grass, the trees, we don't have the moisture because there's nothing to attract moisture. And so we are out of harmony with nature. And this is what you need to remember, that the law works in harmony with nature. If there's something you're wanting and it isn't harmonious with nature, then more than likely you're going to get something you really didn't want. So be careful when you start thinking about things that you want and start asking yourself, yourself is this in harmony with, the, with nature? Is this going to bring about something good to this world? Is it going to be good for me in the long run? And the law works according to how much we can accept and allow. How much good can you accept into your life? Several years ago, a friend of mine and I were talking about her choice of handbags. And she said, this is the only kind I ever buy. And I was looking at them, and I knew that they were very expensive. I checked them out. And I said, it's a little bit more than I'm willing to pay for a handbag. And she looked at me and she says, well, how much of abundance are you willing to accept? And I've thought about that ever since. I'm opening the doors to my heart and to my mind to accept and to allow into my life all the abundance in any, however it wants to appear. And as I am doing so, because it, it's a daily thing, I'm finding more and more abundance pouring into my life from different areas. It's amazing to me how it just keeps coming in. But it comes with, am I willing to accept it? How much can I accept? How much can I allow? The law works with you and how much you are willing to accept into your life. And the law works with how willing we are in being guided in the truth. The truth of who we are. The truth of what God is. The truth of what life is all about. The truth of why we're here. The truth about what it means to be successful. The law works with how willing we are to be guided. So how do you have a successful life? You have to know who you are. You need to listen and then heed the inner voice within. You need to align yourself with Source, with God and to know the law and how it works. This is how, and there's one more thing, how you know all this, how you know your source, how do you know who you truly are? There's only one way I know that works, and that is to go into the silence. It is in the silence that we begin to hear that voice, and we begin to know who we are, and we begin to realize what it is that gets us up in the morning. The passion, the passion for life, the passion for anything, the true passion from anything comes from knowing who you are at the highest level and to living from that source, to living from that power. This is how you know, and these are the principles.